Oh, well, I haven't labelled my layouts um, yet, but I will, definitely. I would normally. So uh, these layouts just happen to be the way they were um, when I started the file. But I'll make a new one from scratch to, to show you the whole process. So you can right-click anywhere on any of those tabs and choose New Layout. And you can have as many as you like at the disposal now. I don't think there's a limit. Okay, so I have now Layout 3. And... Uh, like I was saying, it is a good idea to give them sensible names, so I'll right click on that one uh, straight away and go to rename and I'll give it a sensible name, uh, let's call it A3 uh, cover page. Okay, so I want to make it A3 now uh, and again just by right clicking on that tab uh, I can go to page setup manager. And then you can see I've got the same name there selected. Don't change that. I'm just going to go straight to modify. And then set it up just like you would a printer. So uh, here in the list of printers, I've got all the printers that we have in this room. Uh, but also uh, I've got Adobe PDF, which you'll have in here as well. And then you'll have that at home if you've installed the Adobe Suite. Uh, and then the page size, I'll set A3. What to plot? be on layout, uh, the scale one to one, plot style table on monochrome CTB, and the orientation on the landscape. And that's everything. So uh, if I click OK, now it's going to show me an A3 page and you can see hopefully that this original viewport would have been set up for an A4 page, so the page in relation to that is a bit bigger now. And uh, so I'll close this. And I might just show you, if you don't see these tabs down here, um, firstly check your workspace. So if you're on um, something else, just choose graphic and annotation. Um, and then also if you click on the um, little button next to where it says paper, so don't click on that button paper, but next to it, uh, there are a couple of options for uh, showing you those layout views. So hopefully you can get them up that way. But it is possible to turn those layout tabs off, so the easiest way to bring it back should be to set it just to drafting and annotation, and that should give that same look I've got. Uh, so I've done my page, I've got the page size set, and uh, I've got a view there of everything I've drawn so far. I'll come back to that one in a minute, but just to give you an idea how to add new views, on the Layout tab, I'm going to go to uh, the Rectangular button. Choose Rectangular. And I'll click two points to make a view. So it's that easy. You can have as many viewports as you like. So I'll make another one. Again, Rectangular. They don't need to be rectangular, so you can make them polygonal. In other words, uh, any size, uh, any shape with uh, straight edges. So uh, I'll just click on some points there with uh, turn auto off and uh, just a sort of random shape here, just so you can see. Okay, so Australia. So uh, I'll um, just make those uh, active now clicking on the paper button. So if I click on where it says paper, on this uh, thing called the status bar at the bottom. It'll change to highlight one of those viewports, usually the last one. And uh, so then you can change easily to any of the others just by clicking onto them. And then if you zoom or pan, and any other operation uh, that you would normally in modern space, it'll only happen in that viewport. Okay, so I can zoom in any of them. And if you've got an idea how scale works, you'd know that that is changing the scale. Okay, so making things bigger or smaller on this page. Think about the size of the page in millimetres. That helps to give you an idea. It's a fixed real-world size, 210 by 294, say 3. And so we know this is a certain size in millimetres. If that's 210 millimetres, that's going to be about 150 millimetres. Uh, and so this 
object or this section is going to be a certain size when we print it or a certain scale. But it's not an exact scale. So I can go down here and choose one of these exact scales and that's the size it'll print out. So I can make it 1 to 50 and if I pan holding down the wheel I can move the view or the drawing around and it's still going to be 1 to 50. Notice the orientation is not uh, the way I've drawn it originally, so it's rotated to, I've, I've changed my orientation to draw my section, but I can change it in this viewport up here using the arrows, you can see um, to flip it around 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the orientation I want. It's zoomed out again, so I'll zoom roughly using the wheel to get it centered. And then to get the scale accurately, I'll choose 1 to 50 from there. And now I can pan uh, to get the uh, location. So that's as good as I can do uh, for now because I want this to be 1 to 50. I don't want it to be any smaller. And uh, so the plan won't fit uh, with the viewport at that size. So now I want to go back to working on the page. And here, if you see the button that was paper before, now says model. Okay, so that's, that's called model space that I was in. If I click on that again now, it'll take me back into it. If I click on the button uh, now, it'll take me back to paper, which is paper space. So you've got those two modes of working. You can either draw in model space, which is drawing inside the viewport, or in paper space, which is drawing on the page. And it's different to clicking on the model tab. If you click on the model tab, you're going back to model space, but not in a viewport. Okay, so here, back on the page, if I click on uh, paper to go and uh, take me back to model space, I might just draw some lines so that you can see those lines. I you can maybe just see them over here and in this viewport too. So I was drawing them in model space inside the viewport, which means they'll exist in the model space, whether it's back on this tab or in my viewport. If I go to paper and draw some lines, then they appear over the plan, but I don't see them in these other viewports because they're in paper space. Right, so it's just a matter of thinking in those two modes, and that's really um, at the heart of how paper space and model space work. So you can see that I've just deleted the lines, I'll just do that again. So you can see I'll make a window over that entire area and it'll only select those lines I've drawn recently in this paper mode or paper space because again everything else there inside the viewport's in model space. So I've got these two viewports up the top there. I'll just show you some tricks to move them. And this works with everything in AutoCAD. If you select something, you've probably seen you can use the grips there to change and stretch your object. But then just to move them quickly, you can drag away from those grips on the edge, on the dash line, click and drag, and you can quickly move things roughly. So let's move these things around. Get them out of the way. Uh, there is, but you wouldn't want that. It's such an easy thing to make viewports, and yeah, it's easy to make them manually, yeah. Uh, they used to have them actually in the early days, that's what they, they gave you with these preset layouts, but then, um, yeah, it ended up being easier just to make your own. Um, so, yeah, that uh, went away. But, uh, yeah, so uh, with the um, viewport that I have now, again, I have to be in paper space to do this. I can select the border, and then using the grips there, I can stretch that so that I can see all of my plan. Okay, easing up a bit there, but that's fine. And uh, so I just want to bring that across a bit as well, so I can't see those extra parts there. I might bring that down a little bit. And then 
this other viewport, I'll drag back over above now. And I'll make it a bit bigger so that it's at least as wide as this plan. Maybe you can see my view on screen full. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller so I've got some room. Okay, so I want to go back into this viewport now. So with the model, or sorry, the paper button, take me off the model. I need to make the viewport above active, so I've got to click there first. Pan to get what I want. And then finally I can set the scale and match that to the plan. turn the grid off there so you can see a bit more clearly. So I've got there the section now lined up above the floor plan and um, again I can turn the grid off in the floor plan. So that's a pretty basic procedure that you would do when you're setting up a layout. Normally if you can have things lined up like that then, then uh, you'd want to do that. Right, so then um, maybe just to show you a couple of shortcuts to finish up. Uh, to go back to the page, I've been using this button model to take me back to pages space, but a quick way is to just double click in a blank space. And you can see now that's flicked back to paper. Quick way of going back into a viewport or into model space, double click in one. So let's double click inside a viewport. That'll take you to model space, back out to paper space. So that's normally how you set shift, or how you switch, just click in between them like that. And now I can maybe delete these extra viewports and uh, so I'd have room for probably notes and things over here and the uh, title blocks so I'll uh, show you how to do title blocks and other things later but at least try and set up a page with uh, at least your floor plan set up and then if you have another drawing like a section or an elevation set that up at the same scale on the page and, uh, and it doesn't matter how much you've drawn even if you've only drawn the outline of your floor plan you can set it up at a scale on a page. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, do that. No worries. Um, so, uh, oh yeah. So maybe just as a very final thing, the uh, viewports there. If I go and have a look at a print preview of this, and once you set up a layout, try and print it. So you can do that today easily. If I click on the preview button now, that's how it'll print. But I can see the borders of the viewport. So I'm going to put them both onto a layer that I've already set here called viewport, which I've made that is set to the uh, non-printed. So that's a simple way of making the borders not print. So now, okay, so that's ready for printing. Uh, well, that part of it is. Okay, so that page is done. If I go back and draw, say, my um, hatch for the bathroom or all the other things I've got to add in there. So that's a very quick, simple thing. Okay, so I've got the uh, hatching there now, and that's obviously going to come up, and all I need to do now is go File Print and, uh, and turn that off. So that's normally the way you'll work. I know, uh, again, at first, it's easy to get carried away just focusing on what you need to draw and forget about the fact that the whole point of the drawing is to get pages set up that you can give to other people and easily print out. If you can't get that done, then there's really no point doing all that drawing work because the line work's going to look terrible when you go to print it and it's going to be the wrong scale and just you won't even know how it's going to look. Um, so uh, again, if you've got it set up for printing, even just looking at the print preview like this will give you a much better idea how that's actually going to look on the page than what you're looking at on the screen. Because on the screen you can't see the line weight because it's not set up uh, for the scale that you want. Alright, so uh, again, just make sure you uh, at least 
get that far today and uh, so I'll just click OK there. That's going to make a PDF file of this plan. Okay, so if you really don't want to waste paper, then you can just have a, um, a PDF file like this. And uh, looking at that, you can easily see how it's going to print. But um, like I was saying, there's nothing like seeing uh, your printout on some actual paper and uh, getting an idea how the line weights and everything else prints.